Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster doing the beginning part of What If Deku Went to Hogwarts. Now, this will be merging the world of my hero with the world of Harry Potter. So, this beginning part might be a part zero since there will be a good bit of background and world building to help get you caught up for how everything will work. So, yeah. As for why I'm doing this what if, a new what if like this, if you haven't realized it, please go look at the update video, the most recent one that also talked about the Halloween special and the what if lotto stuff, which is why this video is being made. The winner of the what if lotto did ask for this. So yeah. I already had the thumbnail made and such and the story set up so yeah but before we actually get into the what if hit it Okay, so then, before anything else, let's start with the t point in time when Quirks began, and how that affected the wizarding, not just the wizarding world, but how they operated and such. Now then, as you know, 80% of the world has Quirks. However, a good majority of the 20% of people, basically almost all of them, are actually wizards. They keep this mainly secret and such in order to best blend in. However, there are a number of wizards that actually are born with quirks. It happens every now and then and such. However, due to the quirks being in nature due to the how it's made or described as in my hero world a kind of supernatural occurrence so this ends up causing wizards who are born with quirks the ability that their magic is somewhat augmented in order to produce magic without the need for incantations or even a wand so the kinds of magic that is not only enhanced but made easier to use is determined by the type of quirk that they have. For instance, let's say they have a fire quirk. Using flame magic would be even easier without the use of a wand or any incantations. And we're talking like some powerful flame magic. So that's a example. However, this also meant that wizards who had quirks sometimes also caused a lot of trouble all across the world that made it more difficult to try to hide magic and such. Therefore, a unique branch of the Ministry of Magic was created. Each member of this unique branch was trained to partner up with a magical beast referred to as a Thunderbird. This animal or magic creature you probably seen in the Harry Potter series met, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And yes, it's in the same universe, just dialing it back before Harry was even born and such. But e either way, they're trained to use them as their partner in combination with the uh, Oblivious spell in order to erase the, an entire city's memory of magic in case there's a mass outbreak of the knowledge of magic so yeah this neat branch goes all across the world not to mention that their ability to magically teleport from one country to another has been further refined due to the necessity of it with villains and also 
wizards and witches who have quirks wreaking havoc. Every now and then they have even normal quirked people who cause trouble and ending up accidentally discovering magic. Or then have their memories wiped of the knowledge of magic. So the magic that is used to help keep magic a secret has been highly refined due to the emergence of quirks. <clears throat> so, as for the teleporting from one country to another, if you remember the chimney, the magic chimney transportation, that has also been further refined to hop from one country to another, even across the world. So, yeah. However, this also caused the wizarding community to have wizards in all sorts of places within the superhuman society. In the police, in politics, as well as even support gear and actually work as heroes. Of course, there are some things that they have to do in order to make that happen. Nothing really shady, it's just that they have to be very careful. In some cases, wizards are able to use their magic disguising it as a quirk, giving how crazy some quirks can be. Such as the, well, for example, Animagus, if I'm saying that correctly. Basically, the wizards who turn themselves into animals, for example, can disguise that as a form of quirk. Not to mention the spell they use to teleport from one location to another, where it looks like they're kind of winding, getting sucked into something, then doing the reverse to pop somewhere else so yeah there is that they've also lightened up some of the restrictions in regards to uh, e young wizards not old enough to use magic out in the real world due to the dangers of being attacked by court human normal people and such so there is that and there are still Regular people who don't have quirks, but that's actually a very small percentage of the w world's population. Mm -mm. Now then, hopefully that does give you a bit of backstory for how the Wizarding Society has changed to adapt to this world due to the emergence of quirks. However, one of these... Wizards who have a quirk was, as you probably guessed it, all for one. His brother was born without magic and was believed to be born without a quirk. So he does give him the stockpiling ability, same as in canon, with the result of creating one for all. Now, don't get me wrong, there are also some normal people that aren't wizards that know about the wizarding world and such who help keep the secret and help make sure that it doesn't leak out or report it in case some information is leaked. So there is that. Mm -mm. Next, we get to where, of course, we go back to All for One whose ability to steal other people's quirks, as you probably guessed from my description of it uh, before for wizards with quirks, stealing a large amount of quirks ended up augmenting all of the magic that any wizard could do, augmenting his magic to incredible lengths, even to the point where whenever he got a very unique quirk, was able to take control of the Dormentor. He ended up becoming the new, next Dark Lord after Voldemort, who the and such, making I suppose if I have this correctly, all for one the third Dark Lord to emerge inside the Wizarding World. His plan was not just to take over the Wizarding World, but to subdue the normal world as well. Of course, things still happen similar as in canon for 
the future of one for all being passed down more and more and more however when it comes to all might fighting all for one it still happens similar to in canon but this is only due to the fact of all for one's arrogance he was too well cocky basically and full of himself to realize the power that amassed from the passing of one for all could ever be a threat to him and because of that arrogance it caused this downfall of course they never the normal people didn't find the body and when the wizarding community didn't find it either the wizarding community believed that he was actually still alive and always kept a vigilant watch in case they ever he was able to emerge to cause more havoc so after his defeat to all might it somewhat humbled him a bit and caused him to be more careful to learn not to be too arrogant with his attacks causing him to go underground to prepare for his next round as you could probably call it mm -mm. now then now that that's taken care of and all for one is going into hiding the wizarding world is at on the edge basically wondering when he's going to emerge again so unlike when Voldemort was around they the wizarding world learned something giving the attention to fear a name just gives the person that it belongs to more power against them and after Voldemort they refused to give that to them so the entire wizarding world did know that all might beat him now then uh let's switch over to izuku who is a young wizard quirkless even though both of his parents are wizards with quirks they both went to hogwarts as for his dad he actually joined the special uh force of the uh magic uh Sorry, the Ministry of Magic that helped ke keep the secret while he was off in different countries keeping the secret of magic, you know, away from the muggles as they call them and such. He would sometimes bring back home some in interesting ingredients for his wife Inko to use, who, Inko, while at Hogwarts, accidentally walked into that mess of a room that had all kinds of junk in it. If I remember correctly, it did get scorched up a bit, but not everything was burnt. And by accident, she found the book, the potion book of the Half-Blood Prince, and kept it, actually. It was never really registered to be still there after the whole fight and invasion and such from Voldemort so people just kind of forgot about it but she kept it and learning from it and how useful it could be she opened up her own wizarding spice shop which sold uh, magic ingredients for magic food even some magic elixirs for hexes curses as well as any mishaps with magic that could be used to help fix them. Like the occasional, uh, I guess the proper term would be bone vanishing. Whenever they, somebody uses a magic spell to make your bones disappear in a part of your body. Yeah, basically that stuff that apparently tastes disgusting and all that. But, you know. He runs a magic spice shop. With the lower basement levels being used to uh, store the ingredients for the potions and such, the first two floors being opened up with a kind of balcony for the second story where some more potions and ingredients are stored. As for the 
more higher levels of their house, the which would be the living quarters. As for how they have this much space, if you remember, if you remember Harry's godfather, you know, the who was introduced in the prisoner of Escaban. It's a similar thing to his house, where the walls open up without anybody who doesn't have magic being able to notice it, oddly enough, considering how much it shakes the houses around it to reveal its location. So yeah, magical camouflage and such. As then we see little Izuku, who actually has a bit of a talent for uh, transporting spells as well as animaga sorry as well as animagus magic allowing him to turn himself into a husky if you remember the black and white dogs that are tend to be referred to as sled dogs as well As for, as you can see, Harry Potter in the back of the thumbnail. Yes, he is actually the descendant of Harry Potter. Over the years, Harry's descendants have gone around the map. One of them, one of his descendants only had a female child who married a man in Japan who had the last name Midoriya. So, yeah, passing down to the point where it gets to Izuku in Japan in the modern to the point where he is born at the same time as in My Hero which as you remember doesn't give a uh, numeral date of what year it is when that anime starts but it is referred to that if quirks never existed humans would be taking vacations in space right now so that's a bit of a benchmark telling you that it is really far into the future. <clears throat> now then. One day, Izuku is just playing around and running to his dad when he gets home through the magic chimney teleport. Carrying with him a basket of eggs that he brought from Africa, plugging a leak of intel of the magical world. Stating to his wife that he brought these rune, pro, sorry, I have trouble saying this, but it's called a rune, rune spur, rune spur, I believe is how it's pronounced, a, a collection of magic snake eggs that hatch three-headed snakes, as you can also see in the thumbnail, that are used in the wizarding world to help make some medicinal medicines. Every now and then, uh, Asasi brings some useful ingredients from his travels to Inko to use for her, her shop. So, there is that. However, one of these eggs were quite lively, as it then began to hatch. While Inko and Hasashi weren't looking, it slithered away. As Izuku then went to go wash his hands as Inko stated that the food should be almost ready. As he went over to go eat, he ran into the rune spur. Man, that's hard to... I'm not sure if that's the correct way to prefer now I have to look it up, but still, he runs into it as it hisses at him with its three heads. And considering it's a type of snake, magical snake, I'll give you that, but still a snake nonetheless. Then we hear Izuku perform his first partial tongue. Harry inherited this ability from a exchange of power from Voldemort. Even after he died and came back, I would imagine he still retained the partial tongue, and since it's something that can be genetically passed down, 
through his bloodline, then yeah, Bazuku has it. And calming all three heads down. As he then extends his hand and it slithers up his arm to just chill on his shoulders. As they go, and with Inko and Asasi freaking out, asking why is that on his shoulder? As then Inko states, I thought those eggs weren't supposed to hatch. With Asasi thinking, that's what the guy told me. As Izuku said, why are you freaking out? He's nice. Or, wait, you're a C, aren't you? As the snake slipped, just kind of did their little thing. Ingo doesn't understand what the snake is saying, but the saucy does. As he smirks, stating, Huh, I suppose it's an unusual pet, but it's a rather interesting one. As Ingo then looks at him with the look that you can tell he's thinking, Is he crazy? So, it does still kind of get along with it as Izuku has to sometimes break up the fight between the three heads one tells the body where to go one just follows as the other complains about the direction th that the others are just going with Izuku has to mainly break up those fights as for the name of it he ends up calling it Tricol which the snakes, or the snake, is okay with. Considering that the tri part does represent them quite well. As he got older, he ended up applying and was accepted to Hogwarts. He did bring Tricol over, as every Hogwarts student needs to bring a animal with them for the, some of their magic lesson. As he gets there, obviously he goes through the selection ceremony. And to get there, he does use the whole chimney transportation thing. Yes, Hogwarts has modified some aspects ever since it got pretty wrecked from the attack from the dark mages that followed Voldemort and such. Especially even more so since the emergence of quirks. Now then, if you remember, Hogwarts has seven year course. So, please do keep that in mind. Mm -mm. Now then, as he sits down for the selection, using the select sorting hat, he is picked to go into Hufflepuff. As for why he's not in Gryffindor, like some of you might want him to be, Gryffindors are primarily, uh, are brave, but that's like intentional bravery and such. However, Deku is more the kind of person who thinks it's most important to help others. Which is the kind of personality trait that people in, who get sorted in the Hufflepuff actually have. However... We also see a familiar face, although somewhat younger, with kind of a round face, some pink little, uh, oh, I guess, oval shape marks on each of her cheeks, with brown hair. And as you guessed it, this is Ochako, a, a quirk wizard whose quirk reacts to her magic, given her incredible ability or levitation and such. Even in not just causing things to float, lightening their gravity, but also increasing them. That is how her quark zero gravity has reacted to her magic, making her very useful, including using magic that has the effect of wholesale gravity control. As she is also sorted into Hufflepuff, thinking that it's best to help other people. This is reinforced or due to the fact that she wants to become a rescue hero, as well as when she was younger, she wanted to help her parents any way she could, 
in order to help them. So, yes. So you would go into Hufflepuff. Over three years, Deku and Ochako would actually get pretty close. As for Izuku's first year, while he does return back home for Christmas in his first year of Hogwarts, he ends up receiving something. Receiving the magic cloak passed down from Harry's bloodline for years and generations. Of course, this is the invisibility cloak, which Deku is just thrilled to have and finds it pretty cool. So, over the years, he does end up getting closer to Ochako, even to the point where they actually are dating. As for Tricol, they still argue every now and then that Deku has to break him up, with Ochako being impressed that she has. That Deku has the rare partial tongue. As for where Bakugo is in this, well, before he didn't go in the Hogwarts, Deku was shown to have some very gifted magic in the animal, the uh, Animagus ability to turn into a husky, as well as the transportation, uh, the teleportation magic. So, to help hide it, he is labeled as having a type of warping quirk. Of course, this isn't uh, correct, but it is convenient. Like I said, some of the rules regarding underaged uh, mage wizards and witches in order for them to be properly protecting themselves against any villains that are out in the world, it's somewhat altered. Though not all of them go through this effort to do so. They just kind of avoid trouble as much as possible. So yeah. Next. But he does end up still meeting Bakugo. Though Bakugo doesn't really berate him as much as possible. Since he thinks he has some kind of quirk. And a pretty useful one at that. So not so much for combat. So we then switch over to where Izuku and Ochako are in their third year at Hogwarts. And it's starting to get near to where it is going to be the end of their third year. Which then the teacher tells the class that soon they will have the option of transferring to a normal muggle school. Out Ever, this is something optional in order for those who wish to become heroes not only to help hide magic but to help protect people if that is what they wish to do. Furthermore, for this to work, in some areas of the world it starts in different aspects, but for their training in heroes it seems to be constant in high school. So, for some, it will happen sooner, and others, it will happen later. However, for those of you in places such as Japan, whose high schools happen to only have three years of schooling, you will be transferring, which would add up to your fourth year of Hogwarts, in order to enter a middle school to have a middle school diploma to help blend in better that way once you transfer to the point of going into a hero school after the application is done it should make the process much simpler however I must state that eat you will also be required to m come back to Hogwarts each and every night after school days in order to perform what could best be described as what uh, I'm told is referred to it as cram school. So basically you'll still be going to Hogwarts but it will more or less be a type of cram school to keep up with your magical studies as well 
as future hero studies if you choose this path. For those of you that do not choose this path, you will nothing will really change for you. You will continue going to Hogwarts at normal school hours, and nothing will really change. Of course, Izuku and Ochako want to go. So they do apply for it. So they do end up going at different schools. So once the first year of their normal muggle uh, middle school or their senior year of middle school begins, Izuku does run into Bakugo again and he's still pretty arrogant, pompous, and very loud. Which he just thinks is not really much of a change from when they were kids. As he then goes over back home to the to his mom's spice shop, which doubles as their home in the more upper levels, where he then sees Ochako telling her hi and such. As they, he then sees her dad hunched over a bucket, puking up slugs. As he's hesitant, but just goes ahead and asks what happened to your dad. With El Chaco patting its back, stating, Oh, some rogue wizard tried to steal from my dad's construction company, and as he was running away, he used a hex. The slug hex, as we just see her kind of cringe, trying not to look at her dad right now, because it is not a pleasant sight. As Inko then just walks in, stating, Well, there isn't really a cure for this hex. The best I can do is give you a bucket to help wait it out. As Ochako states, Well, either way, thanks. We hurried up here as soon as possible, considering it's closer to his job than our actual house is. And we couldn't have him throwing up slugs in the middle of the street. Inko remarks that it's fine. She under that she understands that they can't really have that happening. The Duke who then goes to his room to feed Tricol some food, which would be uh let's say about six mice. Two for each head. Afterwards, Tricol slithers onto his shoulders, wrapping its long tail around him. As it talks to him using parcel tongue ability, remarking if his school day went well, and if that loud boy that they that he was talking about gave him any trouble. The Zuga remarked, not really. Of course, sometimes he can be a little over the top. As he then turns into his husky form using his animagus ability to go lie down on the couch as the as Tricol just kind of gets comfortable on the fur on his back. Chaco comes over as the Zuku lifts up his head, laying it on her lap as he gives him pet. Like I said, they are dating. And this is like them just kind of chilling. Especially since she had to get away from her dad, who, as I said, is puking up slugs. And she couldn't stand being near that anymore. Which is very understandable. So things go pretty calmly since they, during the normal school hours, they go to classes like normal schools. As afterwards, let's say about an hour after they get out of Muggle School, they end up having to use a chimney portal in the basement portion of Azuku's house that doubles as a spice shop for her mom's business, his mom's business, to go to Hogwarts for their cram school in magic lessons. So that goes on until we reach the point of the beginning of the actual anime. So yeah, this is part zero 
of What If Deku Went to Hogwarts. I do hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also remember that due to the fact that this has no parts to it other than what the part zero that you know that you're watching right now, it will be getting a second part as well. So, like I said, do hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, like I said, and make sure to set that notification bell to all. So, hope you enjoyed, and see you guys later.